Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima, and I'm here checking out the PC version of Earth Defense Wars 5. Still using a controller, because... <laughs> Apparently a lot of people have actually been having a lot of problems with the PC port's controls. We'll, we'll get to them... Actually, we'll get to them pretty quickly, but for now, let's just go and select offline mission mode. We're not going to be playing online or split screen, although... The fact that that is still there is kind of amazing, even though I haven't tried it to see if it actually works yet. So, yeah, this port just came out like a couple of days ago when I'm recording this. By the time you see this, it'll probably be like a week. And the... It was basically just announced out of nowhere and then released a couple of days later, which is fantastic because, <laughs> you know, it just prevents you from getting tired from waiting for the release after a few months. And it's kind of neat because I got an email as soon as it came out saying, would you like a review code for this? Sure, why not? So let's have a look at the PC port. I'm playing this on an A700K and an RTX 2080, 16 gigs of RAM, and this is running off an SSD, I think. So, this is a pretty good machine, and it can handle it at a flat 60. And yeah, the frames per second marker up the top right there will confirm that. There's no, like, 120 FPS, it's just locked to 60 for now, which is a little bit disappointing. Also, just your basic set of resolutions in the display settings. I don't know why these two settings, these two screens are separate. They don't really need to be. But yeah, it's just basic 16x9 resolutions, but a lot of people have said that the 21x9 uh, hacks that worked for Earth Defense Force 4.1 also work for 5, which is interesting. But yeah, full screen and letterbox which is a weird saying to have, i got to say. And just anti-aliasing shadows and anti-otropic filters. Really basic, for some reason. I'm not entirely sure what that's about, but there you go. You've also got your other settings here, and that's some pretty simple stuff, although I'm not entirely sure what rotation lerp is. Would that be acceleration? I think it's acceleration, but... Oh well, we'll just leave it as it is. And we can turn on and turn off camera effects. I've kept them turned off because, you know, the, um, the, actually there's a good reason for that. But we'll get to that when we're actually in the game. And of course you can change the controls for everyone. This also works for keyboard and mouse. But apparently if you change the controls for driving vehicles from WASD, it'll actually not work properly. There, there's a lot of weird things going on with this. But yeah, we'll turn on screen vibration and camera effects. Just for the purpose of demonstration, and we're going to go with my, my... Well, the class I usually start with, which is the Ranger. You get your four classes, of course. We'll get to what this all is once we actually go and hop into the game, which is right now. Of course, you can pick between five different difficulties, but the last two are locked until you beat the game. Very simple, very easy to understand, so we're just going to pick normal difficulty, because that's what I've been playing on, and we'll just hop straight in. It's so weird, I've done like five videos on Earth Defense Force games, so... Playing this... Again, and trying to remember just what the bloody hell people will probably want to hear about this series, well... Yeah. It can be kind of strange sometimes, so... What is Earth Defense Force? It is a third-person shooter where you shoot the crap out of anything that moves that doesn't have an EDF logo on it. For example, Giant Frogmen. Blow them apart with rockets. That's generally a decent idea. If you don't blow yourself up with the fourth rocket. The one thing that Earth Defense Force does brilliantly is spectacle. And what has more spectacle than six frogmen marching down a street firing laser guns at you? I don't know, and frankly, I don't care to know because this is more than enough for me. So, as a game, it's actually really simple. The absolute majority of missions in Earth Defense Force, of which there are over a hundred in Earth Defense Force 5, because they're freaking nuts like that, is simply to make sure everything on the level is dead. If it's not a mission where everything on the level needs to die, you'll basically just have to hold out and not die and the level will eventually just end. So, 
the level design is very simple as a result of this, but as also as a result, it means that you basically have the ge same general idea of what you're doing, which is go in and blow the crap out of everything as fast as humanly possible, and don't die in the process, which is great. The simple... Simplicity in this case is king. Gravity is a soul of wit, you know, all of that sort of junk. And that means that you have tons of things to explode all the time, or just generally shoot. I need to get out of here. Because I'm having the crap blown out of me. Thankfully, I did just unlock my vehicle. And if I can just, like, oh god. I can just get behind cover for two seconds to actually pull the damn thing in. We can see why. But yep, even my friendlies are shooting at them now. It's not like I have much of a choice, really, but... Yep. Basically, it's just shoot the things. Shoot the things as much as humanly possible. Never stop shooting the things. And I have no argument against this whatsoever. Also, shoot the things with gigantic laser cannon vehicles. Because yes... I, I agree with this wholeheartedly. Let's hop in and actually demonstrate. This is an atomic ray cannon. It's not an atomic ray beam an atomic, or an atomic ray, la ray laser. It's an atomic ray. Wait in, waiting until I actually have something in view. This may take some time, because this is a fairly slow vehicle. Also, you can heal up by collecting pickups while you're outside of cars. That's actually really useful and kind of neat. Atomic Ray Cannon! Why would you ever want to use anything else? Because my god! It is a giant blue beam of death, destruction, and just general awesomeness. And the best thing is, we get seven shots with it. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, did, did, I, did I say you guys could exist? Did, did I allow you to exist for longer than two seconds? I'm sorry. But I'm afraid I can't allow this. Admittedly, the weapons I'm playing with are kind of overpowered. But... Frankly, having overpowered weapons in Earth Defense Force is half the fun. So I should probably explain some more about the in-depthness of Earth Defense Force because it's one of the main reasons why Earth Defense Force continues to, despite the fact it's got like five entries that play almost identically, it somehow manages to consistently improve. So you have four classes in this game. This is the Ranger. He is your... Oh, I, I say basic bitch, but I mean it in the most, uh, I mean it in the most infatuated way possible, because being a basic bitch in this game isn't so bad when you can blow the crap out of everything with ridiculous weaponry. So, he's got your basic stuff. He's got guns, missiles, rocket launchers, uh, assault rifles, shotguns, snipers, all the basics that you would expect from your traditional Call of Duty game. Then you've got your other classes, which I'll be showing off at least some of in this video. You have your Wing Diver, which is your energy weapon user. Generally has things like massive electric guns and uh, chainsaws that are basically made of lasers and just that general sort of thing, right? Then you've got your Air Raider, who can do things like call in airstrikes, and... Yeah, airstrikes, bombing runs, you name it, it's probably got it in some for form of support capacity. He can also call in vehicles too, just like the Ranger, but their vehicles are different between them.
And you've also got the Fencer, who is a gigantic walking tank who can carry things like vibro hammers, chain guns, gigantic cannons that are like, that have massive uh, penetrating ability. He can also carry like swords that slice through enemies because of course he can. Every class in this game plays very differently. The Wing Diver is very focused on... Yeah, the Wing Diver can also fly. So the Wing Diver is very focused on evasion because the Wing Diver has a very low amount of health. And it can go very badly for you if you aren't... If you're in the way of something that needs to die and you just don't have the weaponry to take it out. The Fencer is very focused on defense because the Fencer has an absolute ton of health. The Ranger is a sort of in-between, where it has, like, halfway between uh, defensive and evasive-focused health. And the Air Raider has the same sort of health. But since the Air Raider doesn't have much in the way of direct attacks, he has some direct attacks, but he's mainly focused on support. He's more focused on being on the back line, which means he's more focused on playing in a co-op sense, because... These games do have four-player online co-op and the ability to just jump online and blast aliens with dudes for hours on end not only exists, but is quite recommended. Although, considering that I've been playing Earth Defense Force for something on the lines of six years and I play nearly nothing but single-player, that is still an approachable thing because the way this game's progression works is actually quite interesting. So, you have... These four sets of pickups here, there's small and health major items. Small and major health items, I should say, sorry. And they give you a tiny bit of your health back and 25% of your health back. So you need to pick up as many of those as possible if you want to stay alive, especially on the hard difficulties. You have armor, which gives you one armor point. And you have weaponry. And weaponry improves, at least the weapons that you can find improves as the game goes on. So, the further on you get into the game, the better weaponry you get. Also, your difficulty influences the amount of weapons you can get. So, if you're playing on a higher difficulty, if you play on hard, you'll get stronger weapons than you'll find on normal, and you will need them, because the higher difficulties in this game aren't just, like, throw more enemies at them. They do more damage, which, you know, okay, that's fine. But they also get more aggressive. Their weapons get to be higher powered. And they tend to move in more aggressive ways. So, you end up with the game getting much harder. How the hell did you get up there? You, you end up with the game not only getting harder, but the weaponry for it changing to match. And it's good shit, because it gives the game way more replayability. I always go on about how games like Dynasty Warriors were better back when they made it so that the higher... You, you were meant to do one difficulty first, then move on to the higher difficulties, right? This game takes that concept and runs with it. Oh yeah, also you can blow these guys' arms off and they explode into blood and guts and it's brilliant. I mean, I'm just gonna... Just pepper him with rockets until he dies because that's how we do things here and it appears that my teammates have the same idea just look at this thing look at it can't get to the bloody armor until his body disappears because god damn it <laughs> Also, each class has a special ability, although it's nothing particularly special. The Ranger can sprint, which gives him a larger pickup radius. The Wing Diver can air dash, which will, like, let dodge out of the way. And it also gives her a little bit of a pickup radius like this one. The Air Raider, I'm not entirely sure what he gets, uh, even though I've played him for a while. And the Fencer gets the ability to do things like boost, because he's very slow and very, uh... Oh dear. <laughs> Something tells me he's right through there. Yep, there he is, and I was I was hitting him pretty well. 
Also, their evasive abilities are different. Like, the Ranger here can pretty easily dodge out of the way of some attacks. The Air Raiders, uh, the Wing Divers, Air Dash is a lot like this too. Also, yes, he can roll right through buses. Because the ADF is just that hard-headed, it's great. The Air Raider gets the same thing like that, but he doesn't get the ability to sprint. And the Fencer just basically doesn't get anything. We'll see why shortly. So, you get all your weapons and your armor here at the end. And the nice thing about Earth Defense Force 5, like one of the big things over Earth Defense Force 4 this game has, is that... All of the classes actually get a portion of the weapon and uh, armor pickups. So, if you have to swap to them to beat another level, they won't be completely useless. Hooray! It, it, it's actually a really nice feature and it makes it really hard to go back to Earth Defense Force 4. Because you have to climb the same ladder with all of them four times over, right? Which isn't particularly great when one of the major completion things they make you do in this game is... You have to do every mission with every character on every difficulty, except this time it appears that they've made it so that it also counts as finishing easy, if you beat on normal, and yada yada yada. But yeah, you get to spread the love across all the different classes, which is actually a really nice thing to do. Especially when it means that you can just pop onto another class and immediately start using that class as intended. So yeah, he, she gets... Pulse weapons and gigantic cannons that fire explosive balls of death and stuff like that. She also gets uh, assistance here, um, um, cores here, which she can use to improve her abilities. Uh, the Ranger gets things like bikes, tanks, and helicopters, and also things like uh, speed reduction from being hit 50%. That's actually really nice. But yeah, you get all these abilities here. The Air Raider gets three different weapons. He gets to request gunships, bombers, missiles, satellites. He also gets uh, things like sentry guns, a limpet gun, which is basically just a grenade launcher, but a gun, and support equipment, so things like healing and stuff like that. And the Fencer gets two weapons in each loadout, so you can carry around like two hand gatlings, or in the case of this one here, you can carry a deflection shield or a six barrel launcher. You also get two pieces of support equipment with him, so you get better stuff for shields, your exoskeleton, an extra boost, stuff like that. And of course, you unlock better equipment as you go on by getting as many weapon crates as possible. We're going to go with the Wing Diver for this one, and we're just going to head straight in. Probably haven't been able to hear it over me talking, but the game's also got a story, but thankfully because they are... Oh dear. That's a lot of dust. Use the sandstorm as cover to approach enemy base. The enemies will have a hard time detecting you, but at the same time, your vision will be hampered. So be careful. Can't see anything. Now we can complete our mission without taking gunfire from the base. I'm starting to think that the sandstorm is awesome. Alright, they're probably done talking now. I don't actually have my sound on, if you're wondering, so I can't tell when they stop talking, but you probably heard more than enough through that. But yes, the game does have a story. The story, though, is mostly, is mostly we got invaded by aliens. It takes place in a different ca canon to Earth Defense Force 4, so everything is more or less new to everyone, so you get to go through everyone hearing about the giant insects, although they technically use different words in this one. They call them monsters, which, you know works well enough for me. They basically are. Although it makes me wonder if anyone's ever heard of ants in this universe, but nevertheless. You get to see a few more different types of enemies in this in this level, including airborne drones, ants, and hopefully there's some spiders at some point. But yes, the game's got a wide range of enemies to fight. 
And you can see some of the big improvements they've made over Earth Defense Force over Earth Defense Force 4.1 in this one, including things like enemies basically exploding into tiny bits with their guts splattered all over the building surfaces. It's tiny little changes like this and things like, you know, being able to upgrade all your classes just by playing as one. And things like this dust storm here. This is new. This is actually definitely new over 4.1. I never actually had the time to finish 5, even though I bought it on PS4 twice. But yes, the... There are minor improvements over Earth Defense Force 4.1, which make this game very hard to uh, not recommend over Earth Defense Force 4, at least in the gameplay sense of things. The ports got a little bit wrong with it, but we'll get to that. But yes, the... just... It's got all these tiny little things, and while it's Earth Defense Force, any tiny little improvement to the simplistic formula of going in and shooting a lot of aliens with really strange weaponry is appreciated, because, well, it's it's very simplistic gameplay, and it's very easy for it to get boring or just, you know, just generally repetitive. So any tiny, tiny little thing they can do, there's your... Uh, Wing Diver's air dash, by the way. You know, just blow his leg off and then just kill him while he's down. Because, of course... Hi. Anything that they can do to make the games as, you know, fresh as possible over time, considering that you have to beat them, like, at the very least, four times. And if you want to go for your 100% completion, you absolutely need to play it more than that. But yeah, basically anything that you, uh, anything they can do to make this more engaging is worth the trouble. And they've clearly made some good improvements here. But still, the game is indeed very basic and people who are, let's just say, not a fan of repetitive games should probably avoid this one. But for those of you who like Earth Defense Force, i.e. me... It is absolutely Earth Defense Force. I didn't have a problem with Iron Rain, personally. I thought Iron Rain was actually pretty good. It was better than Insect Armageddon. But coming back to playing Earth Defense Force 5, you can just see the minor things. Like, the ridiculous dialogue is just w much better written in this game. Not to mention better localized. The voice actors have definitely got that trying but not trying too hard but trying hard enough to still be cheesy as fuck thing going on about them and i love that for example Yep. <laughs> They've got a new song. I'm not even going to play the rest of it because you're going to have to buy the game to hear the song if you want to hear it. But yeah. It's definitely still Earth Defense Force. And what it is, is just a good time. Blowing the crap out of absolutely anything that moves. Just shooting a frog dude and seeing him explode into blood and guts. Having a weapon that can just fire giant red beams of homing light. God, I wish I had a bloody rapier. I love the rapiers in this game because they're basically chain guns. I'm not chain guns, I'm chain swords. Where they just fire big red shotgun beams of death. It's brilliant. And I don't know why I can't carry three weapons, so I can always carry around a Lancer, a Rapier, and a, just a long-range weapon of some kind, but there you go. There's a fair few different kinds of environments. They've got the underground missions, they've got the missions that take place in the countryside, they've got missions that take place in flattened cities. You know the drill. It's, it's still a shame that they don't take the time to go to, like, other world locations. Like, I still remember playing Earth Defense Force 2 and being surprised that you can blow up Big Ben in the first mission. And they've never actually gone back to that. 
which is a shame, really. Like, I can see them building, like, six different maps. Like, one in, like, you know, Manhattan. That would be an interesting map. Then you got, like, um, London. Then you could have something like, I don't know, Dubai or Cairo. Just something surrounded by desert. That would be interesting. I know they did deserts in um, Iron Rain, but still, it would be interesting to see them uh, tackle it. You know, Earth Defense Force World Tour, and then Earth Defense Force Through Time. Although, to be fair, they did do that. There was that Wii exclu exclusive game. Um, I was about to say Shingeki no Ryujin or something like that, but that's the fucking Attack on Titan name. Um, yeah, but they did that uh, Wii game about... It was basically Earth Defense Force, but melee combat in Norse mythology, and it was great. I wish I had more time to play that one. Alright, so let's talk about the PC port, because we have to. So, as I said before, I'm playing this on a 8700K with an RTX 2080, and it's fine, right? There is nothing wrong with the way this game performs on this kind of hardware. But, I'm not stupid to think that everyone has this kind of hardware, because this took me ages to save up for, and I basically went broke and starved while I was doing it, so... Yeah, hopefully this will last me a fairly long time. I've had no problems on this hardware. None whatsoever. With that being said, some people have. Now, I'm not going to claim to know these problems exactly, but I was trying to play this on another platform, which is the GPD Win 2. If you don't know what that is, it's basically a handheld device that is basically just like laptop hardware crushed inside like something about the size of a well something about the size of a Vita but it flips open like a 3DS maybe a little bit larger but you get the general idea basically it's them trying to oh god it's getting up <laughs> there's those camera effects for you. But yeah, I was trying to play this on a GPD Win 2. And here's the thing about playing this game on low spec hardware at the moment. I don't know if they're going to fix this, but you'll understand why it's probably going to be fixed, but maybe, maybe not. Maybe someone will be able to find out why it doesn't work. I don't know, but basically the game crashes at random. And by random, I truly mean random. I haven't been able to figure out exactly why. On the GPD Win 2, it has this annoying tendency for the screen to just freeze. And the graphics just seem to stop, and you can't really do anything about it. So, I've had it crash trying to zoom in. I've had it crash trying to do something along the lines of, um, just go into a mission. I've had it crash just completely and utterly at random. I haven't been able to tell why. And this is on hardware that's, like, low spec. Like, below the game's minimum spec. Because the minimum spec in this game is, like, the recommended spec for Earth Defense Force 4.1. So, it's clear that they've given the game a bit of a boost in terms of the game's specifications. However, yeah, it can be a little bit crashy. And I'm not the only one this has happened to. Like, I've seen plenty of, like, rigs that should be absolutely fine for this game on the Steam discussion forums for the PC port saying that they've got the game crashing as soon as they go into the first mission. They've got the game crashing at random and they don't know why. There's no error messages or anything, so that's just kind of unfortunate. So yeah, we're just going to pick this mission here and we're just going to go. Some people have also been reporting that the game's mouse and keyboard controls just don't work. Some people have figured out it's because this game's implementation of V-Sync, i.e. non-existent, and this, um, and the game being in full screen is enough to cause some major issues. Some people have also reported some problems along the lines of, um, the mouse controls simply not working right. And... Yes, it's not great. It really isn't great. There's a few problems. Hopefully they'll be sorted out. 
because on the GPD Win 2, I wasn't getting the best performance. I was getting like 25 FPS at the best of times. But I played Earth Defense Force 2017 Portable. 25 FPS is nothing to me. So I would be absolutely fine with being able to play this game on a lower spec machine, but with frame rates approaching single digits. I'd be fine with that. The game is actually relatively well designed in that regard, in that the game doesn't actually slow down until it really gets to like the lower frame rates. It works fine otherwise. Until it crashes, of course. But yeah. It's a little bit disappointing that the port didn't turn out that great, but considering that they do plan on doing things like releasing the DLC in two weeks, I'm hoping that they have some time to try and figure out what the issues are. They have a Steam thread up on the uh, discussion forum that has, like, you know, report any problems that you have here. Of course, one of the re responses, one of the things they said on that Steam discussion forum was, if you're playing the game on low settings, we don't really want to hear, um, on lower requirements, we don't really want to hear from you, but I did post a post on how the game works fine on lower end hardware, except for the random crashes. Because if it was like, we need something on the dedicated GPU in order to actually make the game work, that would be fine. But considering that I can crash on one mission on the GPD Win 2, and then boot it up again, and then play the same mission, and be absolutely fine the second time around with no crashes whatsoever. That's clearly not the case, so it's just something on their end that's making the game unstable. I'm hoping they sort it out. So yeah, the fencer can use things like massive chain guns and shields and stuff like that. The downside is that he's very slow, and you need to learn how to use him effectively before you actually try and use him. It looks like this arcane six-barrel launcher is just useless. Maybe it's better against things like the uh, gigantic aliens, but yeah, definitely not useful against the red ants, who are more than happy to pick you up and swallow you whole. The biggest improvement, well, I think this is an improvement made in 4.1, but it also counts for 5, is that the Air Raider actually has way better uh, things like calling in stuff. It used to be really slow in 4, but in 4.1 and 5, they've improved it drastically, so he's actually usable in a solo experience, but I won't take the time to show him, because this video is going to be approaching 45 minutes by the time we're done with this mission anyway. I did try some online co-op, because of course I did, and it works absolutely fine on PC as far as I can tell. The few missions I did play had nothing in the way of lag whatsoever. There is also voice chat, but basically no one was using it. They did add that from 4.1 um, to 5, but yeah, it doesn't look like anyone's actually using the voice chat, which I'm fine with, because it means you can actually hear the audio chat going on, and of course, as always, there are bonus missions for multiplayer players that aren't in the single player experience. Which kind of sucks if you're into the single player experience and want to see everything, but then again there are a couple of missions where, like in 4.1 for example, I don't know of any of the particular ones for 5, but in 4.1 they let you control a gigantic ass mech and everyone got a small piece of it to control, so you know, that's a thing. Even just firing at the sky with this guy is fun. It's ridiculous. Because that's Earth Defense Force for you. It's basically just spectacle. Spectacle shooting. Like how Dynasty Warriors is spectacle fighting. And how Sengoku Basara is spectacle fighting that's better than Dynasty Warriors. By a significant margin. You get the general idea. It's... 
It doesn't get to be much more than this, but frankly it doesn't really need to be. As long as they're constantly giving me gigantic swarms of aliens and monsters and shit to shoot with increasingly ridiculous weaponry, I have no reason to complain. Because that's Earth Defense Force in a nutshell and it's great. The shooting is... Well, I mean... The shooting is basic, but when it's this basic, it means it's really easy to just drop into, like, a new weapon and try it out and use it. Like, even the Fencer, who is called... Who is meant mainly for expert players, is still pretty easy to drop in and learn, even if you're relatively new to the series. And that, that's one of the good things about it. It's easy to just drop in, even if you're just playing on easy. Like, even on normal, I'm not having that much trouble. But even if you just want to play on easy and you just want to shoot through aliens, the game's got over 100 campaign missions. That's not even including the DLC. That's just straight up the main campaign on single-player mode. So, yeah. You will have absolutely plenty of content to go through, even if you just want to play through once on one class. Like... It's taken me like seven to eight hours just to get to this point. And like I'm not even halfway done yet. Like one run through the campaign, I'm willing to estimate, takes like 20 hours on one class. Like it's kind of ridiculous just how much they manage to pack into these games these days. Especially when you remember back in like Earth Defense Force 2017 portable days where it was an advertisement for them that they added like six missions to the Earth Defense Force 2017 campaign which meant that it was about which meant that it had about 60 missions then you play this game which has like 105 missions plus more if you are playing in multiplayer and it's like god has come a long way frankly I'm glad that it has though Even when you're playing the simple as hell, but otherwise incredibly entertaining monster attack on the PlayStation 2, you can see just the general potential that this series had. And thank God it's managed to not only come this far, but come out on PC too. Now, only if they release Earth Defense Force 2 and Earth Defense Force 2017 portable versions on the PC as well. That way we can make sure we can hold on to these versions forever. And I was wrong, we're only at 38 minutes. Do I have anything more interesting? I have a... A powered exoskeleton. <laughs> well, yeah, why the fuck not? Let's pick that one up. Uh, do I have anything more interesting down here? No, just your... General rapid fire cannons, okay. Yeah, we'll stick with what we've got. What mission would be good for him, though? Down on wedges? Yeah, man on the wedges. Let's do man on the wedges. Of course, the game's got plenty of replayability if you want to go through Inferno as well. And it used to be my thing to go through, um... It used to be my thing to go into an Earth Defense Force game. Play it on normal for a few stages until I got some decent weaponry, then double back to hard, then double back to hard as, then double back to Inferno, so that I could get really high grade weaponry and just go on through the entire game. But unfortunately, we can't really do that this time because they've actually locked those difficulties out to prevent that sort of thing. And of course, they've got the thing with uh, weaponry in this game as well, where if you... Oh yeah, this is what a bombing run looks like, by the way. Let's see if we can get these two in at the same time. Kaboom, and they all die. <laughs> but yeah, since they made it so that you can't actually play on anything higher than hard off the bat, it kind of sucks for that kind of approach, because you need to just go and play on hard instead. Or you can just do something a little smarter, and go and play online co-op with people who are in a uh, lobby higher than you. You need to actually be good to last very long in that kind of circumstance, though, so... Yeah. 
I'm actually pretty good at this. I've been playing these games for years. I would hope I'm actually pretty good at them at this point, but... Watch this. Smack. He just explodes into blood, guts, gore, and just general... Uh... Just general chaos. It's great. Let's pull in another, um... I have no idea if that's going to be close enough, but it'll work. Bye-bye! Boom. <laughs> oh, I didn't even kill him! Okay. Bye-bye! <laughs> and I get to call in my powered exoskeleton, because yes, and please. Let's just do a bombing run on that, just to make sure that we can actually get it. Let my buddies take care of most of the work. There's my power exoskeleton. They get better than this. They get things like flamethrowers and giant laser guns and... Eventually you can... Well, I don't remember if you can do it in five, but... They definitely let you call in the really big one, as in, like, monster-sized. No, apparently I can't hit that to save my life. Let's just, uh... Let's just use our boosters to get in that general direction. Oh, there's, a, there's one in there, and there's probably two more off to the side. Vehicles in Earth Defense Force games have always been incredibly slow. But they generally make up for it by having some really useful abilities. Like, for example, having a giant rocket launcher. Or in the case of a dude that I played with online who had one of these things already, a absolutely massive uh, one that could fire out explosions. That was what the weapon was called. What they didn't tell you was there was basically a cluster bomb of death that wiped out four of those frog dudes in one shot. And I actually scale the damage for, uh, enemies when you're playing online, so... Yeah, it's, um, it's a thing. So you don't end up just going in and overwhelming the hordes. Oh, hi! Do you like rockets? Just the big smears of gore. Like, you wouldn't think they'd be able to make shooting giant aliens look satisfying in these games even more, but they did. Unfortunately, these, these ones always start out with a little bit of a weakness to them, but when we get further on into the game, which I plan on doing because now that Earth Defense Force 5 is on PC, or at least I hope they um fix up the stuff with the... PC ports crashing, I'll be able to enjoy it portably without having to rely on remote play because relying on remote play on a router like mine is kind of annoying. Okay. Should probably get out and um, call in a nice horizontal bombing run. Huh. Apparently that just doesn't work. That's unfortunate for me. These things teleport in enemies, so you want to try and make sure that they don't get the opportunity to do that very much. Like that, for example. Yeah, I can actually hit this now. First shot didn't do it. Second one absolutely did. And look, my uh, vehicle's recharged. 
Whoops. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Did I give you permission to pick me up? I don't think I did. There we go. Now just two more. I wonder if the complete everything on Inferno reward for the Ranger is still the Inferno rocket launcher that flattens an entire city. Not a city block, an entire city. I remember I remember being so happy when I beat the entire game on Inferno, getting that last weapon and thinking to myself, I wonder what this does. Taking it into a level and literally flattening the entire block, buildings and all, because of course you can destroy tons of buildings and shit in this game, because it's a defense force. But yeah, I remember being so happy when I was able to do it. It was amazing being able to just go boom. Man, this thing recharges quick. Uh, need to, yeah, probably focus on, um, oh. Yeah, you just, you generally kind of want to get away from it, because friendly fire is a thing in this game, and on Inferno, everything does 100% damage, and this will be at a point where everything will be doing, like, 4,000 damage, and you'll have 4,000 health, so you generally just want to make sure that you don't shoot your friends, at least not until the mission's successful, and everyone can safely die. And just make sure that guy dies before I, um, go blast myself into oblivion. Just, uh, yeah, bomb on the hill. Brilliant. Absolutely what I wanted to do. Oh, God. Yeah, just bomb right in front of me. Don't waste any time. Please hurry. Oh, hi. I didn't even see you there. Still can't see him. Shit. <laughs> Let's just drop that exoskeleton down while I'm still alive to do it. Still can't hit that from here. That's annoying. Doing. There, 180 millimeter cannon. You dead. I better go grab some of that health. By flying right over it, brilliant. This one gets the rockets. It's a fantastic just sit down, play it in the background and have like a TV show on or something sort of game. Absolutely brilliant for that. At least on the lower difficulties. Can't even imagine trying to do that on Inferno. I would absolutely die. Can I hit it? I can. Look at it light up. It's really satisfying in a way. There it goes. My controller's vibrating like crazy. Because I always play this game on controller, even on PC. This doesn't feel right not playing an EDF game on a controller after having played it on like the Vita for so long. Now let's just call down 
Let's just call down something that's entirely overkill for these bastards. Which is a 180mm cannon directly to the face. Of course, the sounds remain as satisfying as ever. Be able to do that, but there you go. You know, it's just calling giant screw you cannons to deal with the rest. One more. Weapons, upgraded weapons. Oh yeah, forgot about that. So, just before we leave, there's a reason why everything has levels because they prevent you from lose, uh, using weapons that are too strong on the online co-op. You can use whatever weapon you damn well feel like in the single player if you've unlocked it in the multiplayer though, which is actually a really nice touch. And those little stars next to the weapons names, uh, that means they've been upgraded. Every weapon starts out around level like 4 or something, but every time you get the same weapon in a weapon crate, because you can get duplicates, it'll actually slightly upgrade that weapon for you, so that it's a little bit better, which is, uh, again, a really nice touch. It, it helps keep things at least slightly viable if you're having a little bit of trouble getting a, a better weapon, because it's luck-based, of course. So, that was a look at the PC port of Earth Defense Force 5. Outside of the random crashing, some people seem to be getting and maybe a couple of things wrong with like the game's V-Sync implementation and controls on the mouse and keyboard. It seems to be alright. Let's just hope they go to the effort of actually fixing that stuff. Or, you know, if someone figures out why it's doing it and does like a hex edit on some of the DLLs or the executable or something. But, yeah, it's okay. It's got just those little extra things over Earth Defense Force 4.1 that make it more worth the time. Especially since you've got the ability to upgrade all four of your classes just in parallel with each other as you go. Which is a nice touch. And the idea that of like the little things like, you know, enemies being able to explode into tiny chunks instead of just small, instead of just pieces like in 4.1. There are new enemies and old enemies and 105 something missions means that you'll be playing for a very long time. So, yeah. That's pretty much everything I've got to say. This has been Blue Maxima, and I will see you all next time.